Hi, welcome to Vivid Aquariums TV. I'm Dave, and this is our first show in our new series called Vivid Q&A. Our topic for this show is zoos and mushrooms, and all these questions come to us from our friends on Facebook. Kelly asks, why do mushrooms never stay on the plugs and float away to nowhere convenient? Well, Kelly, I can tell you a number of things you want to pay attention to. Mushrooms need moderate lighting, moderate water flow, and definitely good water quality. So when they release from a rock, it may be because they have either not enough light or too much light. So you could try repositioning the mushroom rock. I must also say, if they do release, they most likely will reattach to a rock somewhere else in the aquarium. I know it may not always be convenient, but uh, they usually do survive. And definitely pay attention to your water quality, keep the nitrate and phosphate under control, and you should have better success. Our next question is from Andy. He wanted to know toxicity information about zoanthids and which ones actually have potential risks and what precautions to take. Well, Andy, I can tell you that not only zoanthids, but a wide range of corals have chemicals in them that can affect humans in different ways and bad ones. So what I always recommend is to wear gloves when you're working in an aquarium. And if you're fragging corals or something where your eyes could get splashed, definitely wear safety glasses to prevent it. Treat everything as though it's very poisonous and that's the best way to protect you from the corals and the corals from you. So just make sure to wear your gloves, wear safety glasses when you're fragging and you'll be okay. Now, next question is from Anthony. He asks, is the blender trick worth it to frag mushrooms or is it just gonna kill them all? Well, I can tell you Anthony, fragging mushrooms in a blender does work. It's definitely the cooler way to do it, more fun, maybe more interesting but we prefer to cut them slowly with a scalpel through the mouth. I think this way you're gonna have a higher survival rate. So our preferred method is to cut them with a razor blade or scalpel through the mouth, cutting them into four or six pieces, and then let those heal. So the blender definitely does work, but we prefer using the scalpel or razor blade. Uh, now Maureen asks, is there a best set of water parameters to grow healthy zoanthids? Maureen, I can tell you that Basic water parameters we use for any reef aquarium do very well for zoanthids. So you like to keep your calcium about 420 to 440 parts per million, alkalinity about 8 to 9 dKH, and magnesium about 1260 to 1350. Keep your nitrate low, ideally less than 10 to 15 parts per million, and also your phosphate low, less than 0 0.08 parts per million. I can say that zoanthids and mushrooms do prefer a little bit of nitrate in the water, so a level of around 10 parts per million does seem to be ideal. Now, Maureen also asks, what steps should you take when zoanthid colonies seem to be diminishing? Well, what I recommend doing is a dip and revive coral dip. You want to dip the coral in that and definitely pay attention to see if you see any zoanthid eating nudibranchs coming off of the coral. If you do notice any coming off of it or think you do, you want to re-dip that colony of zoanthids about every three to four days so that as new eggs hatch, you'll get those off as well because while the dip will remove the adults and new hatchlings, it doesn't remove the eggs. And also, you want to look for the uh, sundial snails. Those can eat zoanthid colonies, and uh, they're pretty easy to spot. They're black and white speckled snails, very small, usually about a quarter of an inch to a half inch in size, and they will eat zoanthid colonies. So if you get the colony to close up, it's going to be a lot easier to notice them, and just manually remove them from the tank. Now, Keith asks, why is it so hard to keep blue zoos alive? Keith, honestly, I don't know that it's necessarily harder to keep blue zoos than other types of zoanthids. What I can say is it may be something with that particular colony. I definitely recommend doing a dip on it, checking for parasites, and make sure your tank parameters are all within the proper ranges. And then Keith also wanted to know, what's the difference between zoanthids and pallies? Well, pallies are larger. They have much shorter tentacles than zoanthids, and they have a thicker mat under them. In fact, they often contain bits of sand or substrate within the mat and the base of the polyps. And, uh, the pallies will feed on larger, meaty pieces of food, while zoanthids are filter feeders that prefer smaller food like oyster feast, rota feast, cyclopes, something much smaller. And zoanthids are much smaller in size, but much longer tentacles around the skirt. Uh, now we have a question from Tyler and Akil. Both of them ask how to improve the growth rate of zoanthids and mushrooms. Well, regular feeding is important. We recommend feeding a mixture of oyster feast and phyto feast. You can do chopped mysis shrimp, and for palethos, you can give them even full pieces of mysis shrimp. Um, definitely want to check your iodine level. If you're going to dose iodine, it can help them grow faster, but you need to check it because it's very easy to overdose. Salford does make a good iodine test kit. You want the iodine level to be between 0.03 and 0.06 parts per million. 
And definitely another option, more and more hobbyists have been doing it. We've tried it here at Vivid. It's worked well. It's to dose vitamin C to the tank. That can actually help zoanthids and mushrooms grow faster as well. So keep the parameters right, feed them regularly, make sure not to overfeed to boost your nitrates too much, and that'll help improve the growth. Now Don asks, what about fading recordias? Well, in our experience, usually when recordias fade in color, it's because they're either underlit or overlit. So what you're gonna do is maybe adjust the lighting to a moderate spot. If you think they're underlit, give them a little more light. If they're very high up or over, overlit, get them a little less light. And again, pay attention to your water quality. You want to make sure to keep the nitrate and phosphate under control. Now, Gerald asks, how to remove hairy mushrooms from live rock? Well, there's a couple ways. If you can remove the rock from the aquarium, you can frag those mushrooms off, usually with a, like a chisel and hammer, or possibly a bandsaw, if you have the inland DB bandsaw. Uh, when removing the mushrooms, you need to take a small piece of rock with the mushroom. Because if you just try to scrape the mushroom off the rock, a lot of times they don't have such a high survival rate as if you can remove a small piece of rock with it. We're going to do a video shortly on fragging mushrooms, so that might be of help to you as well. Uh, now, Evan asked, I've tried to keep mushrooms, but as they move from the rocks and die, but they move from the rocks and die. I hadn't given them any iodine. What was the reason? Well, again, you want to pay attention to lighting. Make sure they have moderate lighting, nothing too bright, water flow, and water quality. Test the water. Make sure that if you do dose iodine, you don't overdo it. So you need to test and, again, have those levels between 0.03 and 0.06 parts per million. And our final question today comes from Kim. She asked, someone told me I don't have to feed my zoos. What do you feed them and how often? Well, Kim, I recommend, again, oyster feasts, cyclopes, and chopped mice shrimp about two to three times a week. You don't want to overdo it monitor your water quality, but definitely feeding them regularly about two to three times a week is going to help them grow faster and do better, and we definitely do recommend it. All right, guys, so that's it for this first episode of Vivid Q&A. Hope this was useful. Stay tuned. We have another one coming up soon in a few weeks. Thanks, guys.